You may have a seat. If you have a question for Julian, you may raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone over to you and I'll point to you so you can ask. If you could just state your name and your outlet. You can sit right there. Yeah. You can just state your name and your outlet before you ask the question. That'd be great. All right. Let's start right here in the front row. We're bringing a microphone to you so they can hear you on the stream. We are streaming live, by the way. And if you have a question watching live, you can use the Ask OIS function on my info. Tyler Dragon, USA Today. Julian, just uh, describe the emotion when you crossed the finish line. I saw you jumping up in the air and really excited. Just how does it feel to be an Olympic champion? It feels amazing, to be honest. Um, I think that after the, this waking up this morning, sorry, I wrote it down, Julian Alfred, Olympic champion. So I think just believing in myself and trusting that I could do it is what really mattered to me. Jonathan Gold, let's run .com. Um, Julian, congratulations. I'm Thank wondering, you. there was rain on the track and there was, it was raining a little bit during the warm-ups as well. How did that affect you if, if it did have any effect on you in the race or in your preparations, anything like that? You know what? Like, <laughs> Coach Flo <laughs> sometimes have us straight in the rain. Um, you got to be prepared for like anything at all. It didn't have any effect on me whatsoever. Rachel. Hi, Rachel Bachman from the Wall Street Journal. My understanding is this is St. Louis's first Olympic medal in anything. Did you know about that? And what does it mean to you to be the first in your country to do this? It means a lot to me. I did it indoor, um, well indoors as well. Um, so I definitely knew <laughs> that St. Lucians would be watching. Um, and hoping that they could get their first Olympic gold, well, Olympic medal, and it came as a goal. So I'm sure they're celebrating right now. Simon Drouin, La Presse, on your right, uh, um, you mentioned a lot about your, your coach, uh, Flo, um, uh, since your, your win, uh, how pivotal has, it, has he been in your gold medal today? And uh, can you describe a little bit your relationship with him? So I met Coach Flo in 2019. He recruited me to come to the University of Texas, um, Austin. Um, <laughs> earlier on this year, especially after World Indoors, I was just so hard on myself and feeling so much pressure, feeling like I have to go out there represent my country again, just seeing the amount of people that supported me. But he helped me turn that pressure into motivation. And he's been my rock. He's been there with me through the ups and the downs. Um, through the hard times, um, I'm just happy he never gave up on me, and he's like a dad to me, a mentor to me. I'm just really happy, you know. He he believed in me, and this is why I'm here right now today, sitting in front of you guys. Uh, Julian, uh, uh, Jerry Longman, New York Times. Did you say you wrote down this morning, Julian Alfred, Olympic champion, and where were you? And <laughs> so I did um, at five in the morning. I usually wake up so early on, on race days um, to just journal, to write down something. And also, I took a snap in the elevator after breakfast <laughs> um, and just said, Julian Alfred, Olympic champion. Oh, you said it. You didn't write it down. Pardon me? You said it but did not write it down or did both? I did both, actually. Okay. I took a picture um, on Snapchat and I also wrote it down in my book. Thank you. Hi, Amy Tenery from Reuters. Um, there were reports that Shakari Richardson and Shelly Ann Fraser Price were not able to get through their usual gate. I'm wondering if you know anything about that, if you talked to either of them before the semifinal and what they had to say. Um, I didn't speak to anybody, to be honest. I had to just focus on just myself and my race plan and just trust in what my coach told me to do. <laughs> Hi, um, it's Eddie Pels from AP. Just kind of a racing question. You raced next to Shakari in the semifinal and you beat her. Uh, does that do anything to set you up for the final as far as building confidence or sending a message, anything like that? Um, I don't think it's about sending a message. This year I've really been trying to focus on just my lane and just working on my execution only and not thinking about who's next to me. Sometimes when I do, I tend to panic, but I think so far this year, I've just 
had such a good strategy in just focusing on my execution only and nobody like next to me. So I think that has worked in my favor. Hi, Weldon Johnson, Let's Run com. Last year, Worlds didn't go as you wanted, fifth place. What would you do differently this year? Well, I didn't have the long collegiate season. I think I ran like over 50 races last year. But I think not having trials and my coach really just being particular in like how I race this year has been like a huge advantage for me. Um, but I think the main difference is just how much I race this year. And we're really preparing like for the Olympics um, this year instead of, well, last year it was really about NCAAs and whatever is left for world championship. But I think this year the main goal was um, the Olympics. Hi there, um, Josh Noble from the Financial Times. I'm just wondering, you wrote down this morning, Olympic champion. Have you thought about how your life might change when you wake up tomorrow? <laughs> no. Um, I'm still trying to think of what just happened. Um, it hasn't sunk in yet. Slowly but surely it is. I'm not sure what tomorrow may look like. I know I have to run the 200. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about right now. Um, I'm getting to bed and just trying to rest, but I haven't thought about it as yet. Since she has to run the 200, we're gonna do two, two more questions and then let her go get some rest. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today, congratulations, Julian. Usually in these scenarios, um, the silver and bronze medalists are also up there with you. So I wondered, is this strange for you right now that you're by yourself? Do you feel lonely? Do you wish they were here too? Um, it's my first time here, so I don't know what to expect. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just happy to be up there as an Olympic champion. <laughs> I'm just hoping to see what tomorrow holds for me. That's all, I'm, that's all I care about right now. Last question, let's go all the way in the back there. Hi, Julian. Nick McCarville from Olympics.com. Uh, you mentioned St. Lucia, obviously, in the history that you made, but what can you tell us about your tiny island nation? I think 180,000 people live there. So what pride do you have being from such a small place? You know, I feel honored to just be an ambassador for my country. Not many persons know about St. Lucia. Sometimes I can be on an Uber and they ask me where I'm from, just hear my accent, they'll be like, where is St. Lucia? And I think now, being an Olympic champion, I'm sure people is gonna be searching for St. Lucia now. And I'm just, I just feel so honored to just wear, you know, my country's name across my chest and just be an ambassador for them. And I'm sure they're celebrating right now. <laughs> um, I'm just looking forward to the celebration when I go home with them. All right, Julian Alford is the gold medalist in the women's 100. Thank you, Julian, and good luck tomorrow on the 200. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In just a few minutes, we will bring on the, me the gold medal winning 4x400 mixed relay team from the Netherlands. We just need to reset the stream, and we'll bring them on, and then we will do the shot put. And we can end this stream. <laughs>